Good evening, and welcome to this week in review. Tonight's stories include the Wolf Pack win the ball tournament, thunderstorm shots, gearing up for Sand and Sea Festival. These stories plus community events, the BBS Playbill, Off the Rack, and more coming up after this. Dear Mrs. Coleman, you don't know me, but I know you know my old red house at the end of the lane. Please forgive me for tracking you down, but I had to thank you. I'm not sure what inspired your kindness. Oh, it's a godsend. Since my wretched hip surgery, just getting to the end of the lane and back takes nearly half an hour, and sometimes the pain just isn't worth it. You brought me something much more important than newspapers. You brought me the understanding that it's the small, the simple things that really help people. If you're doing just a little, you're helping a lot. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Twelve members from the Men's Softball League won the Regional Softball Tournament. The Wolf Pack from Burgio Men's Softball League traveled to Alamort this past weekend to take part in the Regional Softball League. In the semifinal game, Burgio versus Burt Onlands, Burgio took the game with a score of 17 to 3. In the final game, the score was 13 to 12 in favor of the Wolf Pack from Burgio. The team that won this tournament will qualify to play in the National Softball Tournament next year in St. John's. Due to the fact that a couple of the teams dropped out, the decision whether Burgio qualifies for the National Softball Tournament will be left up to the slow pitch national board to decide. However, the Wolfpack team will be going to Grand Falls in August to play in the Provincial Softball Tournament there. Congratulations to Mark Tucker, Danny Bungie, Roger Marsden, Steve Tucker, Tyson Ingram, Jeff Ann, Todd Green, Noah James, Marie Melbourne, Marie Bernie Benight, Jeff Ayer, and Marie Sims. And we wish you good luck in your upcoming tournament. On Sunday, July the 23rd, Burgio experienced a tremendous thunderstorm. Burgio has always experienced a thunderstorm at some point in the summer season, but it usually lasts only for a few minutes. Some residents claim that this storm lasted at least three hours. Some of our younger generations say it was Mother Nature's finest fireworks display. The older generation may not agree with this description, but they will agree that the storm was very destructive. There were a number of damage reports. For example, many residents lost their TV sets, telephones, computers, deep fridges, windows, and lawn lights. It was reported that a couple of residents' own was struck, but we couldn't confirm these reports. The town also experienced power outages and power surges. We would like to thank Roger Hand for his film footage. Stay tuned for more of This Week in Review coming up after this. The little things you do that you think are small and few are the things that mean the most to me. So just keep giving whatever you're giving cause even when you're giving just a little if you're doing just a little, you're helping a lot. It helps a lot. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It helps a lot. The Sand and Sea Committee was busy on Monday of this week putting up decorations for the upcoming festival. 
The Sand and Sea Committee were very busy putting up these colorful flags and their banner at the entrance to the Sandbanks Park, making everything look quite festive. The park was also decorated with flags in anticipation of the event. The committee members also did quite a bit of work at the Aki rink, putting the finishing touches on everything for the outdoor dance that was planned for Thursday night. We spoke to one of the committee members and he informed us that a large crowd is anticipated for the Sand and Sea Festival. Some out of town campers have their camping gear on site last weekend, waiting for the event to take place. John's the Evangelist Church would like to inform the public that their new parking lot at the church has been completed. The Anglican Church of History has planned to make a parking lot in this area for quite some time. Approximately 15 to 16 loads of fill has been dumped in the area. To be able to park close to the church will be very convenient for many people. Our seniors, the handicapped, anyone getting married, not to mention the general public will quickly see the benefits of having a parking lot so close to the church. During funerals, the traffic near the church gets quite congested. This new parking lot will cut down on this problem considerably. Plans are already in the making to have this paved in the future. Next time you visit the church, please take the time to park in the new parking lot. Stay with us for Off the Rack, the community events, and the BBS Playbill, all after this. Hiya, I'm Fleetwood, and I'm a real normal kid. I'm also an amputee, which means in my case, I'm missing an arm and a leg. I was born like this, although some kids lose their limbs in accidents. Sometimes people wonder how I get around, and they don't think I can do much. <clears throat> Wrong! I can do tons. All I need is my artificial hand and leg. As you can see, I've grown out of these, and, and to get new ones, I have to see the prosthetist. Waiting for the guy is the worst. Prosthetists sound scary, but they are regular people, just like us. I stand corrected. Word. It's me, Mr. Wilson. Come on, wake up. It's time for your fitting. Huh? Here's a reminder for you to come and see me in a couple of weeks so I can check on your new lens. You call this mess writing? Uh, yeah. Sorry I scared you, okay? Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, see ya. Bye! Hey, wanna see what I can do with my myoelectric hand? Hell do. I can pick things up. I can hold things lightly or tightly. I can also let things go. The only thing that gives me trouble 
is Cat's Cradle. It's a stupid game anyways. There are tons of things I can do with my artificial leg, like kick things. advantage of prosthetic limbs. Even though prosthetic limbs are cool, it's better to keep your real ones. So play safe. Hey Fleetwood, come on, we got a game. <laughs> hey, meet teeth. Let's go. Yeah, hurry up. See, told you I'm an ordinary kid. Ciao. Off the rack. This week as we scanned our tape rack, we came across a tape of Newfoundland Audro repairing one of their poles which caught fire, leaving the residents of Burgio without power. Let's look back to August 1993. BBF's Playbill. Try your luck on Wednesday by playing Odd Job Squad TV Bingo. Next Sunday at 6.30 p.m. we will have religious revelations from the Anglican Church. And I'll be here again next week with This Week in Review. For This Week in Review, I'm Marie Rose. Good night and God bless.